Welcome to Biker Talk. I hope you enjoyed today's video where I talked to Michael about his two Triumph Speed Triples and his massive Honda Goldwing. My name's Mike and I've been riding for 32 years. Something I'd always wanted to do. I've always liked riding bicycles as a kid and motorbikes was a logical step. I was a fan of MotoGP and yeah, I just I fell in love with bikes as soon as I saw them. Um, not like a lot of people who start as kids and dirt bikes, I never had that experience, but it was road bikes from day one and I haven't looked back. I remember Dad, he had a proud record of many years of buying old, old unloved bikes and selling them for more than they were worth after he'd restored them and, and loved them a little bit. And so he did the same for me. We bought a bike out of South Australia for 900 bucks, a 1980 CB250. We blue slipped it and restored it and sold it for more than the 900 bucks I paid for it. I think it was 1200 bucks I got for that. Look, I didn't have it for a long time, uh, but it, as a learner bike for someone with zero experience, it was perfect. Uh, I managed to never drop it, but I, it was a bike I was happy to drop. So, <laughs> and I was commuting on it from day one. As soon as I had my L's, I was riding it as my daily driver. So got straight into peak hour traffic back in the day and it was a good way to learn and throw myself in the deep end. Uh, so I traded the CB250 on a Virago 250, the Yamaha Virago. Thought I'd try the Cruiser Life one day riding home from work and I was starting to get better at riding and so I leaned it a bit. I hit the, hit the peg on the, uh, on the camber and it threw the back wheel about a metre out and I thought, I'm done with cruisers. <laughs> I want to lean these bikes a little further so I traded it on a Suzuki Across which was another 250, I think it redlined at about 16,500 revs when you were still doing the speed limit. So you felt like Mick Doohan but you were actually still perfectly legal. Uh, it had the, the, the fuel tank was under the seat and the fuel tank was actually a helmet holder. So a very practical bike and a lot of fun. So that sort of got me into sportier bikes. And I kept that right the way through my, the rest of my P's period and traded that on my first big bike, which was a Honda VFR 750. And I kept that one for many, many years. Uh, so I had a period where I sold my VFR when we had kids, not because of me or the kids, because my wife loved being on the back of the VFR. And once she was pregnant and I could only go without her, that was actually annoying her a bit. She'd get pretty jealous about it. So we got off the bike for uh, you know, probably about eight years before I got the bug back and then I went and picked up an F900 GT. Uh, that was a good bike, it was a good one to get back into motorcycling on, something sort of middle of the road, it was enough to have fun on, but not a lot of soul in that bike, so it sort of bored me a bit. So I changed that up to a Moto Guzzi California Custom, which had bucket loads of soul and bucket loads of torque. I was, I was reticent to go to a Cruiser for the same reasons as what I'd had in the past, but this thing had amazing ground clearance for a Cruiser and you could ride it hard and it had lots of pops and burbles and sounded like a V8. I put the Agostini pipes on it and it was beautiful to look at. It was a work of art, that thing. Um, and I loved it. I had that, um, had that bike for quite a while, about maybe four years. Then Triumph released the new Rocket, the, the current model Rocket GT came out and I just fell in love with that straight away. So I pre-ordered that, Waited, was waiting the six months. During that period, my wife said, look, uh, I'm about to turn 50. I'm not sure I want to get on the back of a bike with a, a small seat anymore. I quite like the look of these gold wings. And I thought I'm not old enough for a gold wing, but she said, look, just go test ride one and see what you think. So I went, went out on the Guzzi, test rode the gold wing, left the Guzzi at the dealership and came home with the gold wing because it, uh, it surprised me actually. I thought it was going to be the old lounge chair on wheels, wouldn't go around corners, heavy as hell. But the thing was more like a sports tourer. So I fell in love with that straight away. And it's an 1800cc engine. It's a, it's a flat six boxer engine which is awesome because it's a, it is a heavy bike. I mean, it's, um, I'm not sure what the exact weight is. It's 300 and something kilos, but all of that weight is very low. So the minute you start rolling on the, the gold wing, the weight disappears entirely. This gold wing, relative to the last gold wing, if you put the two side, to, side by side, this looks about two thirds the size of the previous generation. So they don't even look like the same family in that respect. Um, and they did that to make it more sporty. They put the upside down um, telescopic forks on there, which are just phenomenal. And that allowed them to bring the front wheel forward and the wheelbase much shorter. So it turns in as much more of a sports bike as opposed to that sort of turn the barge uh, experience of the previous models. So all of that kind of came together in a combo that meant we could go for long distance touring. We had the, the luggage built in. My wife would be comfortable. She's got thrown on the back in a heated seat, which is living the life and I could still have a bit of fun with it. But when you put that in tour mode and you're just cruising, you can go for days. 
when you need to overtake, you just press a little button, you switch it to sport mode and it takes off like a pack of scalded cats and it sounds like a V8. So it's um, surprisingly fun. That's the 2019 Triumph Speed Triple RS 1050. Oh, I loved that bike the second I got on it. I came back with a big grin on my face and traded the fairly new Rocket GT for the brand new Speed Triple and didn't look back at all. I took the pegs off immediately, put an SC Project race pipe on it. So it, it was a single seater bike from the outset. Um, but I could ride that all day. I, could, I started taking it to the track. That was, it was perfectly fine and a lot of fun on the track. You could, um, yeah, so you could have a bit of a hooligan time on it. You could have a cruise on it. Bit of a do anything bike and didn't have a lot to fault with it at all actually. Been very happy with that bike, which is why it's still sitting in my garage because uh, when I got onto my new favorite bike, I assumed I'd be giving that one up, but I've struggled to actually let it go because it just it has character that I haven't been able to find in another bike and I'm reticent to, to give it up. I was um, starting to look at the Aprilia RS660. So I thought, I'll get me one of those, put my money down with the dealer and uh, they put an order in. So that was ready to go and there was a queue of people trying to get them. I dropped my, my speed and I had to go get some repairs done. I turned up to pick up the, the speed triple and sitting in the front of the dealership was my Aprilia RS. I thought, fantastic. And then I lifted my gaze and sitting on the other side of the dealership was this beautiful red speed triple 1200 RR. I said, uh, I suspect you don't have a problem with selling the uh, RS 660s. He said, no, I've got to queue up, up the wazoo for those things. You can take that today and I can have that sold tomorrow. So what do you want to do? And I uh, made the decision there and then and, and swapped it. So this is a 2022 Triumph Speed Triple 1200 RR, which is quite a mouthful. Um, obviously, as the name suggests, it's a 1200cc engine. Being a Triumph, it's a, it's a triple cylinder engine. It's one of its uh, actually most endearing characteristics. It gives you torque and, and range, which I love. In terms of suspension, it's, it's got all the bells and whistles, including the Olin semi-active suspension built in, uh, which is awesome. It's got the Brembo Stylema calipers and brakes, which is the best of the best. So it, it brakes like nothing else. Um, so they've, they've really left no high-end gear off this, this bike. They've really specced it up pretty nicely. Uh, sometimes commuting, but not often. Most of my riding is recreational and I tend to do longer rides on weekends. Often I, I say, well, I'm gonna ride up the old road to one of the cafes, have breakfast and come back. Next thing you know, I'm in the Hunter Valley, then I'm down Putty Road and my wife's wondering if I'm coming home and the sun's going down and I've spent the whole day on the bike. On Australia Day, I made the fatal motorcyclist error of seeing an interesting road and thinking, I'm sure that takes us to the same place, let's go up there and see what that's all about. I think every vehicle that came past us, and there weren't many, they were all four-wheel drive utes, they all stopped to see if the guy with his wife on the back of a gold wing going down this fire trail was actually in his right mind, and probably not, but Gosh, it was interesting. The, the photos we got are just next level of this sort of, uh, you know, almost red, red dirt. It was shortly after the bushfires. So we had red dirt, you had these blacked out trees with regrowth on them up in the, the mountains with, uh, so the scenery and the photos we got from that were just absolutely insane and it was beautiful. Certainly leave your car driving habits in the car. Don't think about your phone and your gadgets and your tech and your music and all the things that we see drivers doing every single day but actually focus on the craft of motorcycling and I think there's a lot of joy in that you know I'm still I've been riding 32 years now and every day I ride I learn something new um, I would also encourage anyone no matter how experienced or inexperienced you are just to invest in the training it's a couple of hundred bucks you get on some of the best racetracks in the country with some of the best riders in the country and every time I go on a, a track whether it's a uh, a learning opportunity or it's just a track day. If you treat motorcycling, I think, as a learning opportunity, it's way more rewarding than just getting on a bike and scaring the hell out of yourself and hoping you don't die. There's a reason I have three bikes, Ross, and it's because I can't resolve that question in my own mind, right? I'd, I think that's the other thing with bikes. You know, I have, a, I have a joke with my wife and she agrees with me that there's probably a natural number of six you need six bikes to have your, your motorcycling needs pretty well covered. Um, anything less than six, then you start making compromises in each bike. 
So if you can't have a dedicated track bike, then you have a sporty road bike that can be tracked. And if you can't have a dedicated touring bike, then you have a sports tourer, so you can do a bit of sporty riding, but it can also be, be toured. So I don't think a single bike is a reasonable question to ask. Um, you know, if I was suddenly, if I lost my job and I was at the end of my dollars and I really did have to, to give them all up, you know, I'd, I'd probably keep my 2019 Speed Triple RS, ironically. I'd miss the RR like crazy and I'd really miss my Goldwing, but if I only had one, that one is the compromise of the other two. So it's probably the, the one that would give me the closest value if I can only have one. I hope you enjoyed this video with Mike. If you did, leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Now, back to the giveaway of one of our brand new Biker Talk Grin Factor t-shirts. All you need to do is be subscribed to the channel and add your comment with your guess of what my new bike is. The first clue was the brand of this bike has featured on the current series of Biker Talk. And the second clue is my new or not so new bike is a bit of a diva. That's all for today. And remember, you can't buy happiness, but you can ride a motorcycle. And that's kind of the same thing.